The Walking Dead is an American post-apocalyptic horror television series based on the comic book series of the same name by Robert Kirkman, Tony Moore, and Charlie Adler, together forming the core of the Walking Dead franchise. The series features a large ensemble cast as survivors of a zombie apocalypse trying to stay alive under near-constant threat of attacks from zombies known as walkers. With the collapse of modern civilization, these survivors must confront other human survivors who have formed groups and communities with their own sets of laws and morals, sometimes leading to open, hostile conflict between them. Andrew Lincoln played the lead character Rick Grimes until his departure in the ninth season. Other long-standing cast members have included Norman Reedus, Stephen Young, Chandler Riggs, Melissa McBride, Lauren Cohen, Denai Guerrera, Josh McDermott, Christian Serratos, Seth Gilliam, and Ross Marquan. The Walking Dead is produced by AMC Studios in the state of Georgia, with most filming taking place in the outdoor spaces of Riverwood Studios near Sunoy, Georgia. The series was initially adapted from the comic by Frank Darbont, who also served as showrunner for the first season. However, Conflicts between Darbont and AMC forced his departure from the series and resulted in multiple lawsuits by Darbont and others. Glenn Mozzara, Scott M. Gimple, and Angela Kang served as subsequent showrunners. The series premiered on October 31, 2010. It is exclusively broadcast on cable channel AMC in the United States and internationally through the Fox Networks Group and Disney+. The 11th and final season premiered on August 22, 2021, and is expected to conclude in 2022. Beginning with its third season, The Walking Dead has attracted the most 18 to 49 year old viewers of any cable or broadcast television series, though viewership has declined in later seasons. In addition, the series has been overall positively received by critics. It has been nominated for several awards including the Golden Globe Award for Best Television Series, Drama and the Writers Guild of America Award for New Series. AMC have also expanded the series into related media, including the spin-off series Fear the Walking Dead, and The Walking Dead, World Beyond, as well as several webisodes and video games. AMC announced plans for three films to follow Rick's story after Lincoln's departure. In 2020, two further spin-offs were announced, one focused on Reedus and McBride's characters, and an anthology series to feature individual character backstories. Chapter 1, Series Overview The Walking Dead takes place after the onset of a worldwide zombie apocalypse. The zombies, referred to as walkers, shamble towards living humans and other creatures to eat them, they are attracted to noise, such as gunshots, and to different scents, for example humans. Although it initially seems that only humans that are bitten or scratched by walkers can turn into other walkers, it is revealed early in the series that all living humans carry the pathogen responsible for the mutation. The mutation is activated after the death of the pathogen's host, and the only way to permanently kill a walker is to damage its brain or destroy the body entirely, such as by cremating it. The series centers on Sheriff's deputy Rick Grimes, who wakes up from a coma. While in a coma, the world has been taken over by walkers. He becomes the leader of a group of survivors from the Atlanta, Georgia, region as they attempt to sustain and protect themselves not only against attacks by walkers but by other groups of survivors willing to use any means necessary to stay alive. Chapter 1 Section 1, Season 1 when Sheriff's Deputy Rick Grimes of King County, Georgia, wakes from a coma, he discovers the world has been overrun by zombies. After befriending Morgan Jones, Rick travels alone to Atlanta before finding his wife Lori, son Carl, and his police partner and best friend Shane Walsh in the woods with other survivors. After being attacked by walkers at night, the whole group travels back to Atlanta to the Centers for Disease Control building, but find from the sole remaining scientist that no cure yet exists for the pandemic. Chapter 1 Section 2, Season 2 Rick's group, searching for Carol's missing daughter, Sophia, takes shelter at a farm run by Herschel Green. 
Tensions with Herschel's family worsen after it is discovered that he has a barn full of walkers, former friends and family members. Rick learns that Shane and Laurie were romantically involved, while he was in a coma, and that Laurie is pregnant. Shane and Rick's friendship deteriorates, until Rick is forced to kill Shane in self-defense. The commotion attracts walkers to the farm, forcing Rick's group and Herschel's family to evacuate. Chapter 1 Section 3, Season 3 Eight months after fleeing the farm, Rick's group, Sans Andrea, but with Herschel's family, finds a remote prison, which they make their new home after clearing it of walkers. Laurie is killed from an emergency C-section, and Rick starts to become unhinged and hallucinate. Andrea was rescued by Michonne and the two discover Woodbury, a fortified town led by a deceitful man known as the governor who seeks to destroy the group at the prison. Rick's group launches a raid that destroys Woodbury, but the governor kills Andrea and escapes. The remaining citizens of Woodbury move into the prison. Chapter 1 Section 4, Season 4 Several months after the governor's attack, a deadly flu kills many of the people at the prison. The governor finds Martinez, his former right-hand man and kills him, taking over his group before leading them into the prison. Rick's group is forced to separate and flee, while Herschel and the governor are killed. The survivors, divided, face off against the undead and make new acquaintances. They all find numerous signs pointing to a safe haven called Terminus. Group by group, they reunite at Terminus, but Rick's group, Sans Carol, is captured for an unknown purpose. Chapter 1 Section 5, Season 5 The residents of Terminus have become cannibals. Carol leads a charge that frees Rick's group. Some of the group are captured by a group of corrupt cops based out of Grady Memorial Hospital. After the group migrates to Virginia, a stranger named Aaron approaches, inviting them to join the fortified community of Alexandria, led by Deanna Monroe. They quickly realize the residents are ill-prepared to do what it takes to survive. Rick becomes attracted to Jesse Anderson, and discovers she has an abusive husband. Deanna signals Rick to execute the man after he kills her husband as Morgan arrives unexpectedly. Chapter 1 Section 6, Season 6 The residents of Alexandria trust Rick's group to protect the town. A group known as the Wolves use a zombie horde to attack Alexandria, and Deanna, and the entire Anderson family are killed. While recovering, Alexandria learns of a community called the Hilltop. A man called Jesus invites them to trade supplies with Hilltop if they can help end the threat of the extortionist saviors led by a man named Negan. Although Rick's group decimate one savior outpost, they are later caught by Negan and forced to submit to him. Chapter 1 Section 7, Season 7 Negan brutally murders Glenn and Abraham, initiating his rule over Alexandria. His actions initially lead Rick to submit, but Michonne persuades him to fight back. They encounter a community called the Scavengers and ask them for help. Carol and Morgan befriend King Ezekiel, the leader of the kingdom, while Maggie and Sasha rally the hilltop. Rosita and Eugene make a bullet to kill Negan. When the bullet is blocked by Lucille, Negan's baseball bat, Negan forcefully recruits Eugene as a savior. The saviors and turncoat scavengers attack Alexandria but are repelled by Sasha's sacrifice and the aid of Kingdom and Hilltop soldiers. Chapter 1 Section 8, Season 8 Rick, Maggie, and Ezekiel rally their communities into war against Negan, and the saviors. Losses are heavy on both sides and many of the Kingdom's soldiers are killed. Alexandria falls to a savior attack, and Carl is bitten by a walker. Before euthanizing himself, Carl convinces Rick to end the war and restart society anew. Negan attempts to wipe out Rick and his allies in a final battle, but Eugene thwarts his plan by sabotaging the Savior's bullets. Rick then wounds Negan. Against Maggie's wishes, Negan is spared and imprisoned, ending the war. 
Chapter 1 Section 9, Season 9 Eighteen months after Negan's downfall, Rick proposes building a bridge to ease trading, but this leads to more resentment. Rick is seemingly killed when he destroys the bridge to prevent an invasion of walkers. Six years later, his absence triggers discourse between the communities, and a new walker controlling threat named the Whisperers demand the survivors do not trespass their territory. Their leader, Alpha, has acquired a large horde of walkers that she will unleash if they do so. After her daughter Lydia abandons her mother's group for the kingdoms, Alpha disowns her and massacres many residents during a fair. Chapter 1 Section 10, Season 10 Alpha begins breaking down the communities with seemingly random walker attacks and acts of sabotage. Under Carol's orders, Negan infiltrates the Whisperers and assassinates Alpha. Her right-hand man Beta takes command of the Whisperers, but he and the Horde are defeated by the survivors. Eugene leads a group to West Virginia to meet a new group of survivors. Meanwhile, Michonne travels north to search for Rick after finding evidence he survived his apparent death. Chapter 1 Section 11, Season 11 With Alexandria needing food, Maggie leads a group to retake her old community of Meridian from a murderous gang of Afghanistan war veterans, the Reapers. Daryl is forced to join the Reapers as a mole after he discovers his former lover Leah is one of them. Leah kills and replaces her leader Pope, only to continue the fight against Maggie's group upon learning Daryl's true allegiance. Meanwhile, Eugene's group enters the Commonwealth, a massive prospering community, only to discover it has a strict class system. Chapter 2, Cast and Characters The list below contains those that have been credited within the series title sequence and those who are credited as also starring. Recurring and guest stars are listed on the individual season pages. Andrew Lincoln as Rick Grimes, the series protagonist and a former sheriff's deputy, Rick is the leader of a group of survivors who becomes the leader of the Alexandria safe zone. John Bernthal as Shane Walsh, Rick's former police partner and best friend. In the second season, he forms an intense rivalry with Rick. Sarah Wayne Callies as Laurie Grimes, Rick's wife, who has an affair with Shane when she believed Rick was dead. Laurie Holden as Andrea, a former civil rights attorney and member of the original Atlanta group of survivors. Jeffrey DeMunnan as Dale Horvath, an older member of the group who owned the RV in which a group of survivors traveled. Often the voice of reason within the group. Stephen Young as Glenn Ree, a former pizza delivery boy who saved Rick's life. Glenn begins a relationship with Maggie Green and later marries her. Over the course of the series, Glenn becomes an integral member of the group known for his character and resourcefulness. Chandler Riggs as Carl Grimes, Rick and Laurie's young son. Carl is forced to mature and learn to survive in the deadly new post-apocalyptic world. Norman Reedus as Daryl Dixon, the group's primary hunter, Daryl becomes a key member of the group and Rick's trusted lieutenant. Melissa McBride as Carol Peltier, Originally a meek housewife, Carol overcomes domestic abuse to become a skilled, resourceful fighter capable of making difficult decisions. Lauren Cohen as Maggie Green, the eldest daughter of the Green family, Maggie marries Glenn, becomes pregnant with their child and becomes the leader of the Hilltop Colony. Denai Guerrera as Michonne, a fierce, katana-wielding woman who joins Rick's group. Michonne eventually becomes Rick's romantic partner and a mother figure to his son, Carl. Scott Wilson as Herschel Green, a veterinarian and farmer, who maintains his faith and acts as the group's primary moral compass. Herschel is the father of Maggie and Beth Green. Michael Rooker as Merle Dixon, the racist and volatile older brother of Daryl Dixon. In the third season, he is the right-hand man to the governor. David Morrissey as Philip Blake, the governor, the antagonistic leader of the town of Woodbury, the governor is ruthless, paranoid, and dangerous. Emily Kinney as Beth Green, a soft-spoken teenage girl who enjoys singing, 
Beth is Herschel's younger daughter and Maggie's younger half-sister. Chad L. Coleman as Tyrese Williams, tough and compassionate, Tyrese places an emphasis on moral reasoning. He struggles to cope with the immoral nature of some of the group's survival tactics and finds it difficult to kill in defense of the group. Sonequa Martin-Green as Sasha Williams, Tyrese's fiery younger sister and a former firefighter, Sasha is the group's sharpshooter. After several personal losses, she suffers from PTSD. Lawrence Gilliard Jr. as Bob Stuckey, a former army medic and recovering alcoholic who develops a close relationship with Sasha. Michael Cudlitz as Abraham Ford, a former military sergeant on a mission to bring Eugene to Washington, D.C., to find a cure for the Walker virus. Josh McDermott as Eugene Porter, a man who claims to know a cure for the Walker virus, Eugene is cowardly and inefficient when dealing with walkers, but is very intelligent. Christian Serratos as Rosita Espinosa, a tough, focused, and very capable survivor, and also Abraham's girlfriend. Alana Masterson as Tara Chambler, a former police academy student, Tara joins Rick's group after having initially been affiliated with the governor. She serves as a primary supply runner. Andrew J. West as Gareth, the cannibalistic leader of Terminus who captures and coerces Rick's group into submission before being executed by Rick. Seth Gilliam as Gabriel Stokes, a priest who joins Rick's group. He lacks experience with walkers and struggles with his faith in the new world. Lenny James as Morgan Jones, the first survivor Rick encounters in the first season. After suffering a psychological breakdown, he comes to peace with the world around him. Alexandra Breckenridge as Jesse Anderson, an Alexandria resident who develops a relationship with Rick. Ross Marquin as Aaron, a recruiter who invites Rick's group to Alexandria. Austin Nichols as Spencer Monroe, Deanna's son and a guard of Alexandria. Tova Felcher as Deanna Monroe, a former congresswoman and original leader of Alexandria. Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Negan, the totalitarian, sociopathic leader of the Saviors. Austin Emilio as Dwight, a ruthless and reluctant member of the Saviors who forms an intense rivalry with Daryl. Tom Payne as Paul Jesus Rovia, a scout and member of the Hilltop Colony. Xander Berkeley as Gregory, the selfish and treacherous leader of the Hilltop Colony. Kari Payton as Ezekiel, the king of a community known as the Kingdom, Ezekiel is a former zookeeper with a pet Bengal tiger called Shiva. Stephen Argus Simon, a high-ranking member of the Saviors serving as Negan's right-hand man. Caitlin Nacon as Enid, an isolated teenager in Alexandria who forms a close bond with Carl. Pollyanna McIntosh as Jadis, Anne, the impassive, enigmatic leader of the Scavengers. Callan McAuliffe as Alden, a former member of the Saviors who later switches his allegiance to the Hilltop. Avi Nash as Sadiq, a former vagabond and doctor who is rescued by Carl and brought to Alexandria. Samantha Morton as Alpha, the leader of the Whisperers, a mysterious group of survivors who wear the skins of walkers to mask their presence. Ryan Hurst as Beta, the second in command of the Whisperers and Alpha's right-hand man. Eleanor Matsura as Yumiko, Magna's girlfriend who is a proficient archer and former criminal defense lawyer. Cooper Andrews as Jerry, a member of the kingdom and Ezekiel's steward. Nadia Hilker as Magna, the feisty leader of a small group of roaming survivors and Yumiko's girlfriend. Kaylee Fleming as Judith Grimes, the biological daughter of Laurie and Shane who was adopted by Rick after she was born. Cassidy McClincy as Lydia, Alpha's daughter and former whisperer. Lauren Ridloff as Connie, a deaf member of Magna's group and Kelly's sister. Paula Lazaro as Juanita Princess Sanchez, a quirky and flamboyant survivor who has suffered various traumas in her past and later joins Eugene's group. Michael James Shaw as Mercer, a resident of the Commonwealth who serves as the general of the Commonwealth military. Lynn Collins as Leah Shaw, 
a member of the Reapers and former owner of Dog who formed a loving connection with Daryl while searching for Rick after his disappearance. Josh Hamilton as Lance Hornsby, the Deputy Governor and Director of Operations to the Commonwealth. Margot Bingham as Stephanie Vega, a resident of the Commonwealth who communicated with Eugene over the radio. Layla Robbins as Pamela Milton, the Governor of the Commonwealth. Chapter 2 Section 1, Darbont Connections The series features several actors whom series developer Frank Darbont has worked with previously, including Laurie Holden, Jeffrey DeMunn, Melissa McBride, Juan Pareja and Sam Witwer. All five appeared in his 2007 film The Mist, along with Thomas Jane, who originally was set to star in the series as Rick Grimes when it was pitched to HBO. Jane was later in talks with Darbont to possibly guest star on the series as of fall 2010, however, with Darbont's departure, it is unknown whether the guest spot will happen or not. Holden also appeared in the 2001 film The Majestic, which Darbont also directed. Demun has appeared in several of Darbont's films, in addition to The Mist and The Majestic, he appeared in The Shawshank Redemption and The Green Mile. It was planned that Whitwer would reprise his days gone by role in the original conception of the series' second season premiere, and in a webisode, but both plans were discarded. Chapter 3 Production Chapter 3 Section 1 Development On January 20, 2010, AMC officially announced that it had ordered a pilot for a possible series adapted from the Walking Dead comic book series, with Frank Darbont and Gale and Heard acting as executive producers and Darbont writing and directing. The entire series was pre-ordered based just on the strength of the source material, the television scripts, and Darbont's involvement. In January 2010 a review of the pilot episode's script attracted further attention. The pilot began filming in Atlanta, Georgia on May 15, 2010 after AMC had officially ordered a six-episode first season. The series's remaining episodes began filming on June 2, 2010 with Darbont serving as showrunner. On August 31, 2010, Darbont reported that The Walking Dead had been picked up for a second season, with production to begin in February 2011. On November 8, 2010, AMC confirmed that there would be a second season consisting of 13 episodes. He would also like to include some of the environmental elements that take place during Volume 2 of Kirkman's book. Chapter 3 Section 2 Crew The first season writing staff consisted of series developer and executive producer Frank Darbont, executive producer Charles H. Eagley, executive producer and creator of the comic book Robert Kirkman, co-executive producer Jack Lo Giudice, consulting producer Adam Fierro and Glenn Mozzara, all of whom contributed to one episode each. Along with Darbont, who directed the pilot episode, the remaining five were directed by Michelle McLaren, Gwyneth Horder Payton, Johan Renk, Ernest Dekeschen, and Guy Furland, respectively. On December 1, 2010, Deadline Hollywood reported that Darbont had fired his writing staff, including executive producer Charles Sheik Eagley, and planned to use freelance writers for the second season. Kirkman called the announcement premature and clarified that Eagley left to pursue other projects when Darbont decided to stay on as showrunner, and no definitive plans had been made regarding the writing staff for the second season. Was brought on to The Walking Dead with the idea that Frank was going to work on the first season and then go off and do movies chic, didn't want to be second in command on a show when he's used to being a top dog, and so he decided to go off and do something else which is something that happens and is not a big deal. On December 3, 2010, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, executive producer Gail and Heard commented, it's completely inaccurate. The writer's room, there are people that have set up other projects that will be their first priority if their own series is picked up as a pilot or if it's a series. I think just decided that he wants to run his own show. She revealed that it would be likely for the series to return in October 2011, as Darbont and Kirkman planned on mapping out the next season early in 2011. She also confirmed that, every one of the principal cast is signed up for multiple seasons. In July 2011, 
series developer and showrunner Frank Darbont was fired from his position as showrunner for the series, over unethical business practices from AMC higher-ups. Executive producer Glenn Mozzara, was appointed the new showrunner in Darbont's place. New writers joined the writing staff in the second season, including co-executive producer Evan Riley, producer Scott M. Gimple, story editor Angela Kang, and David Leslie Johnson. New writers in the third season included producers Nicole Beatty and Sang Q. Kim, with Frank Renzulli contributing a freelance script. After the conclusion of the third season, Glenn Mozzara stepped down from his position as showrunner and executive producer for the series, per a mutual agreement between Mozzara and AMC. The press release read, both parties acknowledge that there is a difference of opinion about where the show should go moving forward, and conclude that it is best to part ways. Scott M. Gimple succeeded Mozzara as showrunner for the fourth season, with new writers joining the writing staff, such as Curtis Gwynn, Channing Powell, and Matt Negrete. In January 2018, it was announced that Gimple would be promoted to the newly created position of Chief Content Officer of the entire Walking Dead franchise, and that Angela Kang would replace him as showrunner beginning with the ninth season. Chapter 3 Section 3 Writing The television series generally tends to follow Kirkman's comic series across major characters and plots, for instance, Events of the premiere episode of the seventh season correlate to events in issue number 100 of the comics. The series does not attempt to go step by step with the comics, and has leeway in the narrative. In particular, the series' writers, along with Kirkman, often transfer how a character has died in the comics to a different character in the series. For example, in the fourth season, where Herschel Green is beheaded by the governor in the standoff with Rick's group at the prison, in the comic, Tyrese is the one who suffers this fate. Some of the television characters, like Carol, have far outlived their comic counterparts, while others that have already been killed off, like Sophia and Andrea, remain alive for some time in the ongoing comic series. In addition, the writers have included characters wholly novel to the series such as Daryl Dixon, which producer Gail and Heard says helps to create a new dynamic for the series, and keeps the audience guessing from what had already been established in the comic series. Chapter 3 Section 4 Casting The Walking Dead has featured a large rotating ensemble cast. In most cases, because of the nature of the show, departure of actors from the show are determined by the writing, with characters either killed off or written off the show as necessary to develop the story. Cast members are generally told ahead of time if they have been written off the show, but otherwise kept to secrecy. For example, Stephen Young, who played Glenn Rhee since the pilot through the season 7 premiere, knew of his character's death for a year but had to keep quiet, while Chandler Riggs, playing Carl Grimes through the 8th season, was told of his character's departure during the filming in the weeks leading into his final episodes. A few actors have left the show under their own terms due to other commitments or changes, with the writings adopting the plot around these changes. Andrew Lincoln played the series' protagonist Rick Grimes since the pilot. Lincoln announced his plan to leave the show at the start of the ninth season finding that having to spend half a year in the United States for filming left him missing out on his family, in the United Kingdom. Lincoln completed five episodes in the season to close out Rick's storyline within the series, which will be continued in three films. Lauren Cohen played Maggie Green since the second season. As contract negotiations began for the ninth season, Cohen had been given the opportunity to star in Whiskey Cavalier, limiting how much time she would be able to give to the show. Cohen appeared as Maggie for the first five episodes of the season. In October 2019, it was confirmed that Cohen would return as a series regular for the eleventh season. Danai Guerrera played Michonne since the third season, and announced that she would be leaving the show after the tenth season, participating in a handful of episodes balanced against her other acting commitments. Both Lenny James and Austin Emilio were transferred from the main series after season 8 to the spin-off series Fear the Walking Dead. 
James joined the cast of Fear the Walking Dead in season 4 and Emilio joined the cast in season 5. Casting salaries for the principal actors have grown significantly over the course of the show, up through the seventh season. Overall, the salaries had been lower compared to other similar dramas, including AMC's own Mad Men, but this was justified due to the volatility of any character being potentially written off the show. Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride, playing Daryl Dixon and Carol Peltier respectively, had made around US$9,500 per episode during the first season, and by the seventh season, had gotten up to US$80,000 per episode. Lincoln himself was only earning US$90,000 per episode in the seventh season. By season 9, with the departure of Lincoln, Reedus had repeated secured a US$350,000 per episode pay plus additional incentives, potentially earning him used $50-90 million over three seasons. McBride similarly had gotten an extended contract in season 9 worth US$20 million over three seasons. Both of these were intended to secure the pair as central figures for the show going forward in Lincoln's absence. Chapter 3 Section 5 Music Pear McCreary was hired to compose the score for the series. McCreary stated that the main theme was based on his viewing of production designs for the opening title sequence. Instead of doing a full theme song as with his earlier works, McCreary chose to use a simple, repeating motif from the strings section. It repeats over and over, and in fact in the pilot episode, you start hearing it before the main title begins, and this is something that continues episode to episode. You hear the main title music before the main title begins, so you know it's coming. That, to me, was the little hook, that little thing that, whenever you hear it, it takes you to the series. Chapter 3 Section 5 Subsection 2 Soundtracks Four soundtracks for The Walking Dead have been released, to date. The Walking Dead, AMC Original Soundtrack, Volume 1 was released on March 17, 2013. The second volume was released on March 25, 2014. Songs of Survival is a soundtrack for the third season and it was released on August 27, 2013, by Republic Records as a Walmart exclusive for the special edition release of the third season. Songs of Survival, Volume 2 is a soundtrack for the fourth season and it was released on August 26, 2014, by Republic Records as a Walmart exclusive of the fourth season release. Chapter 3 Section 6, Makeup Greg Nicotero is an executive producer and the key special effects makeup artist on the series. Each walker is put through zombie school and is taught how to move like a zombie. There are three levels of zombie makeup, hero, midground, and deep background. Hero zombies are featured walkers and are completely made over from head to toe. Midground zombies get highlights and shadows on the face, but do not get close enough to the camera to require full makeup. Deep background zombies often wear masks and are only meant to be used as a backdrop. Chapter 3 Section 7 Filming the Walking Dead is predominantly filmed in Georgia. Since 2002, the state has offered a tax incentive for large film productions to drive producers to the state and bolster its economy. The first season was shot primarily in Atlanta, but required a great deal of coordination with the city to shut down streets and parks for filming. Production for subsequent seasons moved mainly to Riverwood Studios, a plot of land covering approximately 120 acres located outside of Sunoy, Georgia. Some existing buildings were used here, such as a subdivision that is used by several families, which serves as the Alexandria safe zone. Other buildings are constructed as sets, such as the exterior shots of the main hilltop mansion, the trash heaps used by the scavengers, or Father Gabriel's church. Sets are torn down when no longer needed, the church, after its use in the fifth season, was removed and its spot used for the iconic setting for the first meeting between Rick's group and Negan in the seventh season. The property includes sound stages constructed for interior shots, which then may be reused, 
The interior sets for the prison during the third season were reused to serve as the buildings and sets for the Saviour's Sanctuary in the seventh season. In July 2017, AMC purchased the studio lot from Riverwood for $8.25 million. Some scenes are shot outside of the studio. Woodbury, during the third season, was filmed in downtown Sunoy. Other exceptions include The Kingdom, which is filmed at the former military base Fort McPherson, now converted to studios for Tyler Perry. The series was shot on 16mm film up until the end of the 10th season before it transitioned to digital for the series' final 30 episodes. The change was due to the COVID-19 pandemic with there being less touch points with digital than film. David Tattersall was the director of photography for the pilot episode with David Boyd as the director of photography on the remainder of the episodes. Production design is done by Greg Melton and Alex Hajdu. The effects team includes veteran special effects makeup designers Greg Nicotero and Toby Sells, special effects coordinator Daryl Pritchett, and visual effects supervisors Sam Nicholson and Jason Sperling. Chapter 3 Section 8 Marketing. The Walking Dead debuted during the same week in 120 countries. As part of an expansive campaign to advertise and heighten anticipation for the premiere, AMC and Fox International Channels coordinated a worldwide zombie invasion event on October 26, 2010. The stunt involved invading 26 major cities within a 24 hour period, starting with Taipei and Hong Kong and ending in Los Angeles for the U.S. premiere. The series' official website released, just prior to the San Diego Comic-Con in 2010, a motion comic based on issue number one of the original comic and voiced by Phil Lamar. The site also posted a making of documentary primarily about the first episode, as well as a number of other behind-the-scenes videos and interviews. In the documentary, comic series creator and television series executive producer Robert Kirkman, as well as artist Charlie Adlard, say they are pleased with how faithful the series is to the comic and remark on the similarities between the actors and the comic's original character drawings. Action figures of characters from the series were created for release in November 2011, and have continued throughout the years with eight lineups. The figures, which are manufactured by McFarlane Toys, are designed to resemble the actors on the series. Figures created to resemble the characters as drawn in the comic book were released in September 2011. In December 2020, it was announced by AMC that Chris Hardwick would host a special for the show featuring the appearances of various cast members, titled The Walking Dead Holiday Special, to promote the show and reminisce on the franchise series past. The special was released on December 13, 2020. Chapter 3 Section 9 green initiatives. With a primary objective of reducing the environmental impacts of film and television productions, including The Walking Dead, producer Gail and Heard has directed the cast, crew, production team, suppliers, and bloggers about her series to adopt the Doddle app to make the production almost paper-free, this works by digitally transmitting interactive call sheets and other intra-team and team supplier communications to people's cell phones and tablets. Heard said of using Doddle, in addition to conserving paper, it's also easier, and it's better for security. People are less likely to leave their smartphone or tablet lying around for someone else to pick up. Heard describes additional steps taken to increase efficiency and cut production costs, if you use vehicles that get better gas mileage, that are electric or hybrids, you're going to pay a lot less in fuel. If you use compact fluorescent bulbs you're going to save a lot of money in utilities. If you recycle even your own sets, and use them again, that's going to save money. You don't have to buy new lumber? So there are cost savings, absolutely. Additionally, the production team aims to reduce vehicle idling, which decreases carbon dioxide emissions. Heard also cuts down on plastic waste by personally using a refillable stainless steel eco-usable water bottle and promoting its use among her colleagues. She shared, on a lot of my projects I give them as crew gifts before we start production, and have water stations available, but you can't force people to use them. Chapter 4, Franchise and Spin-Offs Chapter 4 Section 1, Webisodes 
To date, four web series based on The Walking Dead have been released via AMC's website, Torn Apart, Cold Storage, The Oath and Red Machete. Chapter 4 Section 2, Talking Dead A live television aftershow titled, Talking Dead premiered on AMC on October 16, 2011, following the encore presentation of The Walking Dead's second season premiere. Talking Dead features host Chris Hardwick discussing the latest episode with fans, actors, and producers of The Walking Dead. Chapter 4 Section 3, Films Following the departure of Andrew Lincoln as Rick Grimes during the ninth season, Chief Content Officer Scott Gimple stated that they plan to create three AMC original films to explore events related to Rick's character in the future, starring Lincoln, and with the first expected to begin production in 2019. Besides Lincoln, Danai Guerrera and Pollyanna McIntosh will also star in these films. Gimple stated that these will not simply be extended episodes, nor will attempt to adapt any of the comic stories, but will heavily involve Kirkman in their development. The films will be released in theaters by Universal Pictures. The films are expected to follow a group known as the Three Rings, a militaristic force that see themselves as the future of humanity. This is the force whom Jadis was in contact with and who rescued Rick at the end of what comes after, the group that Michonne sees at the end of what we become, the group that Isabella is from in the episode The End of Everything from Fear the Walking Dead, and the teenagers in World Beyond will be from one of the communities set up by the Three Rings. Chapter 4 Section 4, Television Series Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 2 Fear the Walking Dead Fear the Walking Dead is a companion series to The Walking Dead, developed by AMC. AMC started development of the series around September 2013 and committed to a two-season broadcast by March 2015. Fear the Walking Dead was first broadcast on August 23, 2015. Fear the Walking Dead features a different set of characters, developed by Kirkman. The series starts at the onset of the zombie apocalypse, and follows several people that escape Los Angeles as the military attempts to quarantine the city, and seek refuge along the west coast of the United States and Mexico. The fourth season of Fear the Walking Dead features a crossover with The Walking Dead, specifically through the character Morgan Jones who joins the cast of Fear the Walking Dead after the events of the eighth season of The Walking Dead. Similarly, Dwight, played by Austin Emilio, joined Fear the Walking Dead for its fifth season in 2019. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 3 The Walking Dead, World Beyond In April 2019, AMC officially announced it had ordered a 10-episode series created by Scott M. Gimple and Matthew Negrete. The series focuses on the first generation of children that have grown up during the zombie apocalypse who call themselves endlings, and are aware of how to survive if confronted by them, but have otherwise been raised behind walls and have never actually experienced survival. Production began in July 2019 in Richmond, Virginia, with Jordan Vertroberts directing the pilot. The series stars Aliyah Royale, Alexa Mansoa, Anik Mahendru, Nicholas Cantu, Hal Cumpston, Nico Tortorella, and Julia Ormond. The series premiered on October 4, 2020, and ended on December 5, 2021 after two seasons. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 4 Tales of the Walking Dead In October 2021, AMC officially greenlit a six-episode first season to debut in mid-2022. Channing Powell, who has written for both The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, will serve as showrunner. It is an episodic anthology series that features new and existing characters within the Walking Dead universe. Chapter 4 Section 4 Subsection 5 Daryl and Carol Spin-Off A spin-off series created by Angela Kang and Scott M. Gimple to star Redis and McBride as their characters Daryl and Carol, respectively, was also announced in September 2020, with plans to air in 2023 after the conclusion of the 11th season of the main show. Chapter 4 Section 5, Others Wizards of the Coast worked with AMC to include characters and elements of The Walking Dead, into Magic, the gathering as part of a 2020 secret lair card set, 
given that the card game had already had the idea of zombies within the game already. Chapter 4 Section 6, Parodies and Spoofs Due to its popularity, The Walking Dead has inspired dozens of parodies and spoofs featured on YouTube channels like Bad Lip Reading and television series such as Saturday Night Live and Mad TV. Bad Lip Reading made a widely viewed parody involving Rick and the Governor, entitled La Bibida Bibidum. The series's cast was shown the parody at the San Diego Comic Con in 2013, and David Morrissey, who portrays the Governor, reacted by saying he now understood why so many people would walk up to him on the street and blurt, Hey, La Bibida Bibidum. Until seeing the video, he had wondered, What's wrong with these people? The Walking Dead has also been represented as a live comedy performance by English comedian Dan Willis at the Edinburgh Festival. A parody film called The Walking Deceased was released in 2015. Chapter 5, Release Scenes from the pilot were screened July 23, 2010, as part of the San Diego Comic-Con in 2010. It premiered on AMC on October 31, 2010, and premiered internationally on Fox International Channels during the first week of November. Almost two weeks before the official premiere on AMC, the pilot episode leaked online. International broadcast rights for the series were sold and announced on June 14, 2010. The series airs on Fox International channels in 126 countries in 33 languages. The fifth season debuted its first part on October 13, 2014. The second part premiered on February 9, 2015. On May 20, 2021, it was announced, following the closure of the Fox channel in the UK and in Ireland, that the 11th and final season would instead be released on the Star Hub on Disney Plus the day after episodes air in the United States. Chapter 5 Section 1, Home Media The first season DVD and Blu-ray was released on March 8, 2011. A three-disc special edition of the first season, featuring new featurettes and audio commentaries, was released on DVD and Blu-ray on October 4, 2011. The European versions of the first season DVD and Blu-ray are edited for gore, with cuts to Episode 2, Episode 3, Episode 4 and Episode 5. Until E1-WVG re-released the first season in DACH in a special uncut version on DVD and Blu-ray on May 31, 2013. The second season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 28, 2012. It was also released as a limited edition Blu-ray, packaged as a miniature zombie head designed by McFarlane Toys. Special features include audio commentaries, deleted scenes, webisodes, and several featurettes. The third season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 27, 2013. It was also released as a limited edition Blu-ray, packaged as a miniature version of the Governor's Zombie Head Aquarium Tank designed by Greg Nicotero, and sculpted by McFarlane Toys. Special features include audio commentaries, deleted scenes, and several featurettes. The fourth season DVD and Blu ray was released on August 26, 2014. It was also released as a limited edition Blu ray, packaged with a tree walker designed by McFarlane Toys. Special features include audio commentaries, deleted scenes, and several featurettes as well as extended episodes which are exclusive to the Blu-ray. The fifth season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 25, 2015, the sixth season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 23, 2016, the seventh season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 22, 2017, the eighth season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 21, 2018 and the ninth season DVD and Blu-ray was released on August 20, 2019. Home video release for the first six seasons was distributed by Anchor Bay Entertainment, and home video release for the seventh season onwards was distributed by Lionsgate Home Entertainment in the United States for the American home video releases. The international home video release were distributed by Entertainment One. Chapter 5 Section 2 Syndication my network required the broadcast syndication rights to the series, premiering on October 1, 2014. 
The version that airs on my network is edited to meet broadcast television standards. Chapter 6 Reception Chapter 6 Section 1 Critical Reception The first six seasons and the ninth and tenth seasons of The Walking Dead have been well reviewed by recognized critics, while the seventh and eighth seasons received more mixed reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes, the series has an average score of 81% dot for the first season, 87% of 31 Rotten Tomatoes critics gave it a positive review, with an average score of 7. 35 tenths. That site's consensus states, blood spattered, emotionally resonant, and white knuckle intense, The Walking Dead puts an intelligent spin on the overcrowded zombie subgenre. Metacritic scored the first season 82 one hundredths based on 25 critic reviews, 23 of which were positive, 2 mixed, and none negative. For the second season, 80% of 24 critic reviews on Rotten Tomatoes were positive, with an average score of 8.05 over 10. The site's consensus states, the second season of The Walking Dead fleshes out the characters while maintaining the grueling tension and gore that made the show a hit. Of 22 Metacritic critic reviews, 18 were positive, 4 were mixed, and none were negative, their average score was 81 hundredths. Early criticism of the series focused on the slow pace of the second season, particularly the first half. Ken Tucker of Entertainment Weekly, described the series as a nighttime soap, comparing it to a parody of a Samuel Beckett play that had very little sense of direction and few appearances of walkers. Nate Rawlings of Times Online Entertainment section noted that the pace during the first half of this season has been brutally slow. They've tried to develop individual characters, but each subplot meant to add a layer to a character has been quickly resolved. Later reviews from other critics, such as Scott Wampler of Collider.com, recognized the increased quality of the second half, stating it seemed far more intense, more interesting, better written. Recognizing the overall season, Kevin Yeoman of Screen Rant offered praise saying the writers succeeded in unshackling themselves from the intermittent monotony brought about by the serial nature of the show. The third season had 88% of Rotten Tomatoes 33 critics giving it a positive review, with an average score of 7. 85 tenths. The site's consensus states, the palpable terror and visceral thrills continue in the third season of The Walking Dead, along with a deeper sense of the people who inhabit its apocalyptic landscape. Metacritic's 19 critics rated the season 82 one hundredths, all of whom gave a positive review. For the fourth season, 81% of Rotten Tomatoes 32 critic reviews were positive, with an average score of 7. 60 tenths. The site's consensus states, consistently thrilling, with solid character development and enough gore to please Grindhouse fans, this season of The Walking Dead continues to demonstrate why it's one of the best horror shows on television. Metacritic scored the season 75 one hundredths based on 16 critic reviews, 13 of which were positive, 3 mixed, and none negative. The fifth season had 90% of Rotten Tomatoes 32 critic reviews rating it positively, with an average score of 6. 95 tenths. The site's consensus states, thanks to a liberal dose of propulsive, bloody action and enough compelling character moments to reward longtime fans, The Walking Dead's fifth season continues to deliver top-notch entertainment. Metacritic scored the fifth season 81 hundredths based on 11 critic reviews, all of which were positive. For the sixth season, 76% of Rotten Tomatoes' 25 critic reviews were positive, with an average score of 7. 40 tenths. The site's consensus states, six seasons in, The Walking Dead is still finding ways to top itself, despite slow patches that do little to advance the plot. Metacritic scored the sixth season 79 one hundredths based on ten critic reviews, nine of which were positive, one mixed, and none negative. For the seventh season, 66% of Rotten Tomatoes' 18 critic reviews rated it positively, with an average score of 6. 85 tenths. The site's consensus is, increased character depth and effective world-building helps The Walking Dead overcome a tiresome reliance on excessive, gratuitous violence. 
After the controversial season premiere episode was aired, critic Matt Zoller Seitz criticized the series' consistently cynical use of violence, stating that the longer this series goes on, the more obvious it becomes that the violence is the point, and everything else is an intellectual fig leaf. For the eighth season, 65% of Rotten Tomatoes 17 critic reviews rated it positively, with an average score of 6. 65 tenths. The site's consensus states The Walking Dead's eighth season energizes its characters with some much-needed angst and action, though it's still occasionally choppy and lacking forward-moving plot progression. For the ninth season, 89% of Rotten Tomatoes' 22 critic reviews were positive, with an average score of 7. 15 tenths. The site's consensus states, nine seasons in, The Walking Dead feels more alive than ever, with heightened tension and a refreshed pace that rejuvenates this long-running franchise. Metacritic scored the ninth season 72 one hundredths based on four critic reviews, three of which were positive, one mixed, and none negative. For the tenth season, 77% of Rotten Tomatoes, six critic reviews were positive, with an average score of seven tenths. The site's consensus states, a few changes in front of and behind the camera allow TWD create space for compelling new stories and some seriously scary new adversaries. In 2013, TV Guide ranked The Walking Dead as the number eight sci-fi show. Chapter 6, Section 2, Comments About Diversity Some critics have commented on the increasing diversity of the series. This approach was initially applauded by commentators. In 2015, Lindsay Putnam of the New York Post questioned whether the show was in danger of becoming too diverse as the show seemingly reached critical mass for its non-white, non-male survivors, and now has no choice but to kill them off. Robert Kirkman has discussed the increasing diversity of the show and the comic books. He has described how he regrets the lack of diversity in the early issues of the comic book series and explained how they would have been vastly more diverse if he were to have started them now. Chapter 6 Section 3 Ratings During its first season, The Walking Dead attracted between 4 and 6 million viewers. Viewership began to increase in its second season. During seasons 3 to 7, it attracted 10 to 17 million viewers. In 2012, during its third season, it became the first cable series in television history to have the highest total viewership of any series during the fall season among 18 to 49-year-old adults. In 2014, total viewership for the show's fifth season premiere was 17.3 million, making it the most watched series episode in cable history. In 2016, a New York Times study of the 50 television series with the most Facebook likes found that like most other zombie series, The Walking Dead is most popular in rural areas, particularly southern Texas and eastern Kentucky. Ratings began to decline during season 7 and have continued to steadily drop, which was blamed on a variety of factors, including Rick's presumed death. By the end of season 9, fewer viewers were watching than at any time since the show's first season. Chapter 6, Section 4, Awards and Nominations The Walking Dead was nominated for Best New Series by the Writers Guild of America Awards 2011, and Best Television Series Drama by the 68th Golden Globe Awards. The series was named one of the top 10 television programs of 2010 by the American Film Institute Awards 2010. For the 37th Saturn Awards, the series received six nominations, for Best Television Presentation, Andrew Lincoln for Best Actor in Television, Sarah Wayne Callies for Best Actress on Television, Stephen Young for Best Supporting Actor in Television, Laurie Holden for Best Supporting Actress in Television, and Noah Emmerich for Best Guest Starring Role in Television. The series was nominated for Best Drama Series by the inaugural First Critics' Choice Television Awards. The pilot episode Days Gone By received three nominations from the 63rd Primetime Emmy Awards, for Outstanding Sound Editing for a Series and Outstanding Special Visual Effects for a Series and one for Outstanding Prosthetic Makeup for a Series, Miniseries, Movie, or Special. For the 41st Saturn Awards, the series received its highest number of nominations, 
with a total of seven, including for the series itself, Andrew Lincoln for Best Actor on Television, Norman Reedus for Best Supporting Actor on Television, Emily Kinney and Melissa McBride for Best Supporting Actress on Television, Andrew J. West for Best Guest Star on Television, and Chandler Riggs for Best Young Performer on Television. Chapter 7, Lawsuits Chapter 7 Section 1, Breach of Contract Suits Frank Darbont's departure as showrunner in July 2011 during the second season came as a surprise to many, as it came shortly after the season's premiere and a few days after that year's Comic-Con, where Darbont helped to promote the series. It was speculated that he was unable to adjust to the schedule of running a television series, however, The Hollywood Reporter reported that AMC had fired him. There had been reported difficulties in the production of the second season, including disputes over planned budget cuts and executive meddling, and it was known that Darbont and AMC had several discussions relating to these factors. Neither Darbont, AMC, nor the cast nor crew of The Walking Dead spoke about the reasons for his firing. In December 2013, Darbont and his agents from Creative Artists Agency filed a lawsuit against AMC in a New York court, citing breach of contract. A central part of Darbont's lawsuit accuses AMC of denying him and the CA the promised profits from the success of the series, based on how AMC had used vertical integration in producing and distributing The Walking Dead. As stated in Darbont's filing, he had initially entered into a contract with AMC to have a third-party studio produce the series, from which he would have obtained 12.5% of that entity's profits, after standard deductions. AMC wanted to produce the series in-house, and for the first season, Darbont's lawyers had been assured that Darbont would be protected from self-dealing fees by having AMC commit to imputed license fees equivalent to those of other independent studios, with Darbont earning profit from that. Darbont contends that when the series' popularity took off, AMC presented a license fee deal to Darbont around February 2011 that used an unconscionably low license fee formula such that AMC could report the series running at a loss and ensuring that Darbont would never see any profit from the series, as an example, the suit references statements in 2012, following the second season, that AMC claimed the series was running at a $49 million deficit, despite being one of the most popular series in broadcast. Darbont's suit contends he was fired just at the start of the second season so that AMC would avoid having to pay him. Initial discovery phase hearings were held in 2014. Darbont's lawyers sought to gain information from AMC on their other series, specifically Breaking Bad and Mad Men, to obtain a fair market value for The Walking Dead. AMC asserted it had done no wrongdoing, had already paid Darbont $3 million upfront for two seasons, and was able to properly set the imputed license fee that worked into the profit formula for Darbont. The network resisted the request to provide otherwise confidential information on the other series. The court granted Darbont's lawyers access to the requested information as part of the discovery phase. Darbont described crisis-level problems during the series's production while under deposition, claiming that AMC had cut the per-episode budget from $3.4 million to $3 million while keeping the tax credit offered by the state of Georgia for filming there, effectively reducing the production budget by 25%. In August, 2015, Darbont requested to amend his original complaint that AMC further reduced his profits from the second season as his firing mid-season meant he was not fully vested in the season. Allowing AMC to reduce the profits paid him. Darbont's amended request points out that he had written and produced all the episodes in that season already and was entitled to the proper profit share. The judge granted this amendment in February 2016, partially influenced by concerns raised in Darbont's deposition. At the end of the discovery phase in September 2016, Darbont's lawyers stated they were seeking damages of over $280 million, AMC stated they would vigorously defend against the lawsuit. Summary judgment statements were completed in July 2017. While waiting for summary judgment, Darbont and the CA filed a second lawsuit against AMC, based on further evaluation of material from the discovery phase. 
The second suit contended that AMC purposely manipulated some of its licensing fees that should go to Darbont, such as revenue from digital sales and from overseas markets, and sought an addition 10 million US dollars in damages. Though AMC had initially refused to provide necessary documents for discovery for this new case, AMC did offer to willingly provide them after Darbont's attorneys threatened further legal action during October 2018. By December 2018, the presiding judge ruled against issuing summary judgment in the case, setting up for a jury trial to hear the full case. Due to the retirement of the judge that had overseen the previous cases, a new judge was assigned to the case in February 2019, who joined both the initial 2013 suit and the 2018 suit into a single case, expected to be heard in May 2020. AMC filed a new request for summary judgment of the case in December 2019. The summary judgment was denied, and the jury trial for the case started on February 10, 2020. The judge also denied AMC summary judgment in the second suit for the additional 10 million US dollars in April 2020, determining that should also go to jury. By July 2021, AMC reported they had settled with Darbont and CAA for 200 million dollars and future royalty payments. In August 2017, Robert Kirkman, Gail and Hurd, Charles Eagley, Glenn Mozzara, and David Alpert filed similar lawsuits against AMC citing breach of contract over profits owed to them as a result of AMC's vertical integration. As with Darbont, each had been given a certain percentage of the series's profits based on if the series was produced by a third party, but when it was transitioned to AMC Studios, their share was dramatically reduced. The Hollywood Reporter estimated that if the four seek similar damages as Darbont, the lawsuit could be as high as $1 billion. The suits, filed separately in Los Angeles and New York City, were consolidated into a single case heard in a Los Angeles court. Initial hearings over the contractual terms of the modified adjusted gross receipts were held in February and March 2020, and the court ruled in July 2020 that AMC had followed the contractual terms in calculating these amounts, giving the network a preliminary victory in the trial. Kirkman and the others said that despite the lawsuit, they will continue to work as partners with AMC to assure continued success of The Walking Dead and its spin-off series Fear the Walking Dead. Chapter 7 Section 2 Stuntman Death During filming of Season 8 in July 2017, stuntman John Bernica was performing a 21-foot drop but ended up missing padded cushions and instead fell onto the concrete floor, sustaining a serious head injury. Though rushed to a hospital, his injuries were too severe and he was taken off life support the next day. AMC and the show's cast and crew expressed remorse for the accident, shutting down production for several days to deal with Bernica's funeral. The Atlanta Occupational Safety and Health Administration branch launched an investigation of the incident. Bernica's mother filed a lawsuit in January 2018 against AMC asserting that the production had not taken sufficient precautions to protect Bernica, including lack of sufficient padding, lack of rehearsal, and not having an ambulance ready to treat his injury. The judge presiding the lawsuit dismissed AMC's claims that it was not responsible since Bernica was in full control of setting up the stunt, allowing the case to proceed to a jury trial. The trial was held during December 2019, with the jury awarding Bernica's family 8.6 million US dollars in damages on December 19 after finding that 8 Taiwan dollars, the AMC entity managing production, and the production company Stalwart Films were negligent in Bernica's death, while clearing AMC itself of any wrongdoing.